Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Shannon Kerr, and I'm here to help you learn how to use EFT in your everyday life just to become more emotionally aware. I specialize in working with moms because let's be honest, moms, we are so busy doing all the things of being moms that sometimes we forget to kind of enjoy the experience of motherhood. And that can lead to feelings of overwhelm and anxiety and resentment with our kids, none of which is really the ideal situation. So what is EFT? Emotional freedom techniques is the long term. So you, you may have heard of it as tapping as well. And I may use EFT, I may call it tapping. It's all the same. Emotional freedom technique is a way to connect your brain and your body back together because your brain likes to keep you busy doing the things, um, being in survival mode a lot of the time as a mom, you know, making sure everything's done, um, that you're remembering what's coming next. Um, and your brain also likes to remind you of everything that you did wrong. <laughs> so something to be aware of is that your brain well, it's running all the time. We're thinking thousands of thoughts a day. And unfortunately, the majority of those thoughts are negative thoughts and they're running on repeat. It's kind of like someone leaning beside you and saying, remember that time and remember this thing, remember that thing, all those times you screwed up. That's what your brain is trying to do. And it's also um, just trying to keep you on your toes just in case you forget something. But a lot of these thoughts are not actually true. We, we forget to check in with our brain and see, like notice what thoughts are running through our head. And that's when this feeling of anxiety and overwhelm can set in. Um, the best way to release that is to allow yourself to be present with your feelings instead of trying to push them to the side. I know for me in the past, before I started using practices like tapping, I was basically just in full survival mode all day long with my children, with my business. I had a full-time daycare at that point. And I was just in that mentality of like, I just have to make it to five o'clock when the kids go home, or I just need to make it until when my kid goes to bed. And then as soon as my kid went to bed, it turned to, okay, I need to like turn off my feelings with food or alcohol. And so I would do that for the rest of the evening you know, numbing with television or social media, and drinking and food, and just like, I still don't want to look at my feelings, I'm going to turn them off. And then I would wake up the next morning, feeling kind of crappy because of everything I'd done the last evening, and start again. <laughs> so not ideal. And something that I hear from a lot of moms that we um, we want to be more mindful, but we're not exactly sure how. And so here I am, I'm going to teach you some simple techniques. And um, if you continue on, like and subscribe and follow the series, we'll be we'll be practicing um, with different beliefs that come up with your tapping, and learning how to release them. So for today, I just wanted to talk about the basic practice. And it's something that I do a lot, um, kind of like a book ending of my day. So in the morning, thinking about, you know, how am I feeling when I wake up? And how do I actually want to feel? What are my intentions for the day? Rather than what we normally do as moms is getting sucked into um, doing the stuff like I get up and I start making breakfast and I'm packing the lunch and I'm doing the stuff. 
rather than thinking like, I'm going to be a loving, connected, peaceful mom. Um, so that's my morning bookend is setting those intentions. And then in the evening, I love to use tapping as a way to release and forgive and just let the day go. Um, something that I have noticed since I started tapping a few years ago is that I sleep. I sleep so much better than beforehand because again our brains love to keep us busy even when we should be getting rest and so giving myself permission to like okay this is done maybe it wasn't perfect maybe there's things I would have liked to do better but it's done and I deserve to rest and move on to the next day um, there's so much processing that happens in your brain during your sleep of kind of sorting things and categorizing things. So something that may feel like the biggest deal when you're heightened in your emotions, once you finally actually get to sleep on it, your brain sorts that into new categories. And that's why so often, you know, we go to bed feeling like this was such a crisis. Once you get the rest, you wake up, you're like, oh, Actually, that's just like that, put that in the mother-in-law category, or this is how I do this or whatever. It, it brings down the tension. So it's so important for us to get sleep. Well, there's so many reasons why it's important to get sleep. Anyways, I sidetracked a little bit. Tapping, it is going to help to recognize those thoughts that are going on in your brain. And begin to, um, I picture myself literally stepping out of the feeling and looking at it to see, um, are the thoughts around that feeling true? Are they thoughts that I want to be carrying on with? You know, if, if I'm thinking things like, man, I suck. No, that's not a thought I want to carry on into the rest of my day, into my life. And um, beginning to choose again for yourself. And this is where emotional freedom truly comes in because you're empowering yourself to actually choose how you're going to feel. Doesn't mean that you're ignoring um, conflicts or problems or anything like that, but instead of choosing to make them feel, uh, make you feel less than or uh, victimized or powerless, anything like that. It's helping you be the creator of how you want to be in your life. It's a pretty amazing tool. So this practice, if you start out, and I love to journal. So I, I tend to tap with my journal or with a piece of paper just to also to help me kind of remember where I was when I started, but writing down literally what is the problem or the feeling that I'm having, like I am feeling this, or I feel this way about this problem and writing out the feelings that are attached with the problem or the situation and where you feel them in your body because we carry different feelings in different places. Um, I, of course, I didn't write down different things, but you know, there's things that you, you think of that feeling as like, oh, I feel it in my gut. Um, I tend to, anything guilt related, I feel it in my gut compared to um, things attached to like, uh, being a good mom, I feel that in my heart, you know, it, it feels very deeply connected to my heart. Um, there may also be thoughts or feelings that really sink into your head. They make you feel foggy or dizzy or just like cluttered up there. So noticing where you feel it and on a scale of one to 10, 
or zero to 10. Zero would be like disappeared, but 10 being the highest, like I can't imagine this being any more intense right now. How strong is that feeling? So making a note, what is the feeling or the, and the, the problem, the situation that it's attached to, how strong is it? And where do I feel it in my body? And then we start tapping. So what we start with is the setup phrase. And this is three sentences tapping on the same point, the setup point is the side of your hand. And tapping is just literally just gentle tapping, not hammering. <laughs> and I get a lot of people asking, like, which hand does it matter? Do you have to switch? I've been taught it's just your comfort. Um, I'm right handed. So I tap with my right hand on my left. Um, but if you wanted to switch it up, you can. Um, you can't break yourself by tapping. There may be certain points that if you're not completely hitting the point, then you will notice a, a lessening, but you're not going to suddenly like do it completely wrong, let's say. So starting on the side of the hand, we're going to really express um, the feeling and the problem and also how uh, you're willing to accept that this is the way you feel. And that is a new thing for a lot of people. We don't always like to talk about how we're feeling. And we really don't want to accept how we're feeling. If it's a feeling like sadness or anger, um, it's something that we're not super comfortable in holding space for that feeling. We want to just jump on and move to the next one. And that's why there is that instinct to numb right? To jump on and, or cover it up. Like, oh, I'm feeling a little sad. I'm going to jump on Instagram and think about something else. I'm feeling angry. I'm going to suddenly I'm hungry, right? That's your brain again. Like, ooh, you don't want to look at that feeling. Let's do something else. But you can start practicing the belief that I am safe, even when I'm feeling this feeling. So this is what happens <laughs> is three sentences that start with even though, and I love this phrase. It's even though I have this feeling, I still love and accept myself anyways. Um, it, any kind of phrase that it evokes ex acceptance. So it could be, even though I'm feeling sad, I completely and sincerely accept myself. Right? Mm. Do we accept ourselves when we're sad? Sometimes we don't. Even though I'm angry, I accept my feelings. Even though I'm frustrated, I accept that I have this problem. So three sentences with these phrases. And um, I think I might put together a little list for you. Um, just thinking I might make that into a little PDF of different even those that you could have. Stay tuned for that. But all of this is just opening you to the possibility that it is okay to be with your feeling. And you can also add in the words, I choose. Again, I love this. Even though I'm feeling sad, I choose to love and accept myself anyways. So you're looking at that sad part of you and accepting her or him um, or them. <laughs> Even though I feel bad about what I did, I choose to feel calm and peaceful. So choosing, again, gives you that empowering feeling. And then from there, you're going to take those feelings that you wrote about. So where you feel them in your body, how 
they make you feel um, the thoughts that are coming up. And this is when you get to vent. And venting is an amazing experience. It gives you the chance to, again, acknowledge how it's feeling and how it feels in your body. And you may notice things like yawning. Uh, I get almost a tingle down my spine when I know I've kind of hit hit the right note for myself. Like, yes, that, that is how you're feeling. (laughs) Um, yawning, burping, sometimes any kind of just like release for your body. This is the gift that you are giving your body. You're giving your body the chance to express the feeling and consider you're not forcing it on. You're just considering, um, moving on from that feeling and choosing something else. So this is not spiritual bypassing where we're like, ah, everything's fine. I'm not angry. La la la. It's like, no, I'm angry and it feels crappy and I'm going to tap through it. So the tapping points after you've done these three setup phrases of even though and I still choose to love and accept myself, then you're going to tap through. So let's say you're feeling sad. We'll we'll act that out. So tapping at the top of the head, all of the sadness, and then eyebrow point. I feel this sadness in my heart, side of the eye. This sadness feels heavy under the eyes. I'm sad about this person under the nose. It feels stuck in my body under the mouth. This sadness that I feel collarbone point. This sadness is really heavy under the arms. So not in your armpit, but down like four inches or so down from your arm. Um, All of this sadness I'm carrying. And then under the chest, sorry, I need to move my chair. So like at the bottom of your rib cage, if you're well endowed, you have to adjust a little bit under the rib cage. I do believe that's connected to the liver with acupuncture. So all of this sadness in my body and then finishing with the wrists together. I wonder if there's a way to move on. So after 10 points, personally, I like to stop after 10 if I'm tapping by myself. If you have more thoughts that come up, you can just start again and carry on until you feel that number go down. Remember, we checked in on how intense that number was. Now you're going to breathe in and just notice, has the number gone down for you? And if it's kind of stuck or if new feelings have come in which sometimes as we bring up these feelings new ones like actually I'm sad and I'm a little angry Um, you can tap on that as well but really giving your body and your brain that chance to vent the feelings and then after that you can do a round of um, possibilities so Sorry, I had notes and then I moved them over. Um, Personally, when I'm tapping with a group, I do venting and then curiosity. Like, I wonder how it would feel to bring in a new feeling. Um, How would it feel in my body? I wonder if there's any thoughts that need to be let go. But just bringing in that curiosity And if you feel after you've released that initial feeling like you're good, you can also stop there, right? But you can also add a final round of affirmations of like, even though 
I felt sad at the beginning. Now I feel peaceful. Now I feel uh, confident. I, I am choosing to take charge of this situation. So showing your brain like, okay, I started out here and now I'm going this way. Because remember your brain, if you're letting it run on automatic, your brain will like, I'm feeling sad. Okay, it's time to go get the ice cream. It's like, no, I'm feeling sad. I'm still safe. And I'm choosing to do something for myself instead, because I want to feel loving. I want to feel calm. I want to feel confident. Again, it's all about setting those intentions. And what are the actions that you can do in order to set those? So I feel like that's a good place to stop. And I would love to hear in the comments, uh, have you tried this and give it a shot, see how it is for a morning routine or when you need to vent after, after a, like a big conversation or I love it as well before a stressful situation, like uh, going in for a new job, right? I, I just did that a few weeks ago. Um, even though I'm nervous, I still choose to be calm. It's possible to be both. And the more that you focus on the one that you want to be, instead of the one you don't want to be, the more that you will be the part that you want to be. It's amazing. So if this video was helpful, please hit like the like and subscribe. I have no idea where those buttons are at this point, but I'm going to get better at all this. And uh, share this with a friend as well. I really want to help teach more moms how to become more emotionally aware. Because how freaking amazing would it be not only to teach yourself, but also to be able to teach this skill to your kids. And then we send them out into the world as emotionally literate people. That's my goal. All right. Thank you so much. Again, I'm Shannon Kerr, and I'm so glad you're here. All right. Have a great day.